Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the California Conservative Show. Today we have a very special guest with us, uh, Senator Runner, who is now an elected member to the Board of Equalization. Thank you for coming on the show. Sir. Good to be back with you. Absolutely. Um, sir, uh, we have uh, in recent events um, an Amazon tax that was announced where it taxes people purchasing things off the Internet. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, I mean, the reality is that uh, when especially when things are tough and people are looking for money they're everybody's trying, everybody's trying to find out what the new what's a what's a tax that we can find and one of the issues that is being po very popular right now is talking about the people who buy things on the internet and these are buying on the internet from from internet retailers that are not located in the state and so traditionally what's been held and that is the, in the law when i say tradition i'm talking about the law both federal and also in the court federal courts have said that you can't charge a tax or you can't force a company to charge a tax if that company is located outside your state and that company doesn't have what's called a brick and mortar presence so when you buy something for instance on walmart.com uh, you pay california state sales tax on it because walmart has businesses and, and, and uh, retail operation in the state. But if you buy something on over, overstock.com or LL Bean or Amazon.com, a sales tax isn't charged to you because they have no presence in the state of California in terms of a retail presence. And that's what the law is. So uh, what has happened is there's been efforts to then to try to create laws that try to make other things a presence in the state so that then they can force these companies to collect the tax. In California, what they did is they tried to then say, what, if you have what's called an affiliate, an affiliate is just an advertiser. A lot of people may be familiar with that if they go to the website and they'll see uh, somebody has a blog. And on that blog, they're talking about uh, different kinds of uh, cameras. And they say uh, on their blog, if you'd like to buy this camera, you can go to... Uh, 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 you can go to uh, Amazon.com or you can go to Adorama or you can go to Ritz Camera and you just click on. Uh, they don't actually sell it, they just send you somewhere and then you buy it there. Uh, what this law did that, they're, that they passed in California said, if you are that kind of an advertiser, an affiliate, then that forces whoever you, whoever you send people to to have to collect the tax. Well, what happened is then these companies like Adorama or Amazon, L.L. Bean, they said, if that's going to be the case, then we're not going to use those affiliates anymore. And those affiliates are really small business owners. There are about 25,000 of them in the state of California. And so when California passed that law, uh, AB 28X, we basically lost jobs. We lost revenue because all those companies also paid uh, uh, income tax. And uh, so now that's the big fight that's happening in California. Uh, Amazon is in the midst of trying to do a referendum to try to get voters to weigh in on this. Um, we'll see when this airs exactly what the, what, 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 what the outcomes of those things are. But the bottom line is that California should be doing nothing that stops jobs. It could, should be doing everything to create jobs. So this is not only, but it's not only an attack on small business, it's also an attack on all business because they will be setting a precedent to be able to attack all the other companies that are just similar to them, correct? Well, right, similar to, 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 to Amazon. It's, and there are, there are literally, literally thousands of them. Um, and the other issue that I, that I always like to point out is if you're a small California business and you have an internet presence, so it's, you know, you're a small retailer, you sell one product and you sell it to, uh, you know, 20 different states or people in 20 different states, under that theory, you should be collecting sales tax from all those other states and submitting it to those, to those states. And what I'd like to point out, that's not an easy issue. That means that you had to register with each one of those states in order to collect their sales tax. Then you had to remit their sales tax. But more importantly, each one of those states then had the ability to come in, look at your books, audit you. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's, a, that's a lot of infringement on a small business. It means I have to have an accountant from each state that specializes in that kind of accounting, right? That's could could be. Or could, yeah. And, 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 and again, if you do it wrong, all of a sudden you're going to be audited by them. You're going to have to then pay them their, their, they, their tax that they think is due. 
Uh, and and, and that's and quite penalties. frankly why it is that the state, that the federal law or the feds, feder, the, uh, both in court and in legislation, have shied away from that because it's it's such a disruption to the interstate commerce, and that's why the fed federal government has gotten engaged because it's about interstate commerce. So uh, again, I, I, I my position on these issues are that we ought to be doing things to grow businesses, not to undermine businesses. And so, in any which way, it should be called uh, illegal because um, because it is a federal issue, right? So the state doesn't even have a business. Well, there's no doubt that no matter what happens in the state of California or other states where this has been tried, it ends up going to court and litigated because eventually these will all find them well themselves up to the U.S. Supreme Court. There's print plenty of previous decisions that have kind of sided with these kinds of businesses. Uh, in, in a number of years ago, it was catalogs that were under this pressure. Uh, now it's under the internet. So again, I, I, I just think that we, we're wasting a lot of taxpayer dollar chasing around after this money. And what we need to do is figure out how to get people back to work, not chase around after money that we make people try to figure out how to, how to collect and hurt their businesses. So what do you think are the main priorities then the Board of Equalization should be trying to, uh, uh, for industries they should be trying to protect? Well, I, I think the main board, the, the, I believe their effort, the Board of Equalization should be, number one, we should be trying to create t fair and clear tax policy so that people really understand what their tax obligations are. And that ought to be very clear. When a tax is unclear, I think we should always favor the taxpayer, not the government. Uh, the other issue we ought to be doing is we ought to go be going after what I think of the, as, as the underground economy. Those who are selling illegal things, those who are selling uh, DVDs and CDs out of the back of their trunks, because that's what's really disrupting the, the retail market, and also then eventually re, uh, disrupting the tax flow that's available. So those are good, some good places that we should be emphasizing, I think, our enforcement activity. So they reward people for not paying taxes, and they punish people for paying taxes, right? Well, unfortunately, you know, what happens is once somebody is determined to maybe owe the tax, you know, a tax agency can be pretty relentless trying to collect it. And uh, our, our goal is to make sure that we're just, again, not going after hardworking mom and pop retailers, but that we truly are trying to figure out how to create clear tax policy and find those who are clearly evading the tax. When, when, when you have a clear evader of tax, that's really a tax increase on everybody else. When somebody owes the tax and they're not paying it, that means you and I have to pay a higher tax to make up for it. Well, it's, and really, uh, if you um, don't support small business, you hurt corporations because small businesses are what become corporations, right? Well, again, the problem with the state of California is we are losing jobs. Uh, the study, last study I saw that saw that, that, that California was 50th in regards to job retention. Uh, we lost over 4,000 uh, companies or business, uh, businesses in the state of California in this last year. Uh, that, that, just, that, th that is a shrinking pie. What we need to do is create a an enlarging pie. Uh, we need more businesses in the state of California, and that's how we grow taxes. We don't grow taxes by taking more from, this, from the shrinking number of businesses. We grow taxes by growing the number of businesses that are successful and then collecting taxes and, and, and doing their part in order to pay taxes. So do you think that we need to support more small businesses then? Well, absolutely. I mean, the small business community is what grows into large businesses, but the reality is those small businesses are by far where most people are employed. Uh, and, uh, and, and the harder we make it, either through tax policies or regulatory policies, um, you know, the harder it is for, for them to reason why they're going to stay in California. I mean, California is a terrific climate. I mean, it's the it, it it was the success of the California business views and, and climate that made us grow so much in the '50s, the '60s, and '70s. And it's amazing to me that California now has chasing some of those businesses out of California uh, to places that are far less desirable to live, in my opinion, mm -hmm. uh, only because of these. Uh, horrendous policies that we pass here by the legislature and signed by governors. That's awesome. I, I definitely think that they should be trying to eliminate more taxes. Our laws off the books and trying to write more laws on the books. They just keep making it more complicated. Well, the more we make it harder, the more people say, you know what, it's a lot easier over there in Utah and Texas. Real quick, can you give our viewing audience uh, your contact information so that they can start up this small business? Absolutely. Uh, you know, if people are interested in finding out more about what uh, they can do to be successful in starting up a business, we, will, we would direct you to the Board of Equalization website. Uh, there's lots of places there for, for uh, webinars, those kind of issues. Uh, 
tutorial programs as to what it is that you need to do to get your business started. Uh, that'll be up on the screen. And then if you've got any other tax questions, you can certainly call our office and that number will be up on the screen too. Uh, if you've got some questions about your taxes, about tax issues that you might be caught up in. And then if you'd like to see what we are, oh, kind of uh, our views as to what the current political agendas are in the state of California, you can go to georgerunner.com. And uh, we've got uh, a number of uh, our articles that we've published dealing with whether it be tax policy or regulatory policies. All right. Well, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate having no you problem. on the Good show. to be with you again, George. Absolutely, buddy. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Hello. My name is Paolo Sivaja. I'm the Legislative Director for Capital Resource Institute, but I'm also the proponent for Stop SB 48. For those of you that don't know, SB 48 was recently signed legislation by Governor Brown introduced by Senator Leno from San Francisco that introduces what many are deeming gay history. Well, SB 48 is not just about history, it's about all social sciences, has to do with homosexuality, bisexuality, as well as transgenderism. And this is introducing it into the classroom or public school systems K through, tw uh, K through 12th grade. So children as young as five will be learning about an individual's sexuality Children in first grade, second grade, third grade, and on will be learning about individual sexuality in all social sciences curriculum. Stop SB 48, the referendum, seeks to stop the recently passed and enacted legislation by the governor. So I recommend that you visit our website, and that's www.stopsb48.com. Again, that's stopsb48.com. Sign up for our emails, donate, let your friends know what's going on, and let's go ahead and tell the governor and the legislature that we, the people, will veto SB 48. Thank you very much.